Whoa! Okay. Are we all strapped in? You ready to go? This must be less than 15, who knows? Doesn't matter if this is your first one or your last one or whatever. Got some nice chords here for you. Got some A minors. We were learning that the other day. I got the open A string there. Middle finger on that D string, second fret. Ring finger, G string, second fret. Index finger, B string, first fret. Little E, open. Let's try again. Open A. Middle finger, second fret of that D string. Ring finger, second fret of that G string. Index finger, first fret of that B string. And E string, that little E string ringing out. Alrighty, 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 alrighty. So we're talking a lot about triads yesterday. So major, A, A major, A minor. What's the difference? Major third, minor third. This note right here. Major third, minor third. Uh, in relation to this note here. That's the tonic. Major third, minor third. Major happy, sad minor. <laughs> All right, here's some more. Minor, major, minor, major. All right, how do you get a major chord? You stack some intervals. You stack some intervals. You stack a major interval in together with a minor interval, and you get a major chord. All right. You have to, a major interval and a minor interval. Right there, minor, major. Uh, here's the full do re mi fa so la ti do. All right, uh, if you want a minor chord, you do the opposite of that or inverse. So you get a minor interval and a major interval. Gives you a minor chord. Minor interval, major interval. Okay. Now, if you want a diminished chord, as you can see there on the screen, we got a diminished chord. It's called C sharp. Diminished. That's what. That's like when you get a minor and a minor. So if you're thinking about plus, let's just think about this as simple math. So a major chord is two things add together. Uh, a major interval uh, with a minor interval on top. Um, a minor chord is a minor interval with a major interval on top. Uh, we can discuss this in semitones as well. A uh, diminished chord, G sharp diminished, is a minor interval on the bottom with a minor interval on the top. And finally, our augmented chord, uh, which I'm going blank on right now, is just two major intervals. Uh, it's augmented. Okay, major plus major equal augmented. Okay, let's go to our chord scales again. So, chord one is going to be what? Major! Major. In this case, it's A. Chord five is E. Chord four, subtonic, maybe, all day long. It's D in the key of A. Back to that, back to your old, your old friend, back to A for chord one. Chord one, chord four, chord five, chord four, chord one. Chord five, chord five, chord five, chord five, chord one, two, three, two, three. Alright, I'll 
I'll show you this later. so many memories of being a kid and the guitar teacher would just be like one second he'd be there fucking shredding go Woo! setting the guitar on fire banging against the wall and then he'd be like oh sorry that's the guitar lesson and I'd be like whoa that was insane what did you just play I'd just be like oh yeah fucking mm, some good grooves there. but anyway I'll, I'll teach you all this eventually but so all I did there was I played the A chord the D chord the E chord okay and I rocked between the second, I think, sustained two. I'll go with that. I'll say it's a sus two. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, all right. Uh, so, yeah, we'll talk about that eventually. But all I'm doing is I'm just playing the top note of each chord, okay? top fingered note and then I'm skipping one fret and put my okay here's how we do it um, okay you just need one finger first of all that's the start of the A chord here's our A chord we're just playing the top two strings of each chord okay so for each one we only need our index finger okay here's the top two notes of the A chord move finger down one Top two fingers of the D chord, move up one. Top two fingers of the A chord, I'm in the A and the G string. Then I'm in the E and the A string, okay? So that's all I'm doing, just moving my finger up and down, hitting two strings at a time. Okay? I know I don't have a chart to show you this, but maybe you'll be okay. Now for each one, we're gonna skip a fret and put our ring finger in, or else our little finger, whichever one you want. So all I'm doing is, for this first one, we got hitting that open A string, hitting that D string, okay? But on the D string, our index finger is on the second fret, and our ring finger is on the fourth fret, okay? That's sus two. Jeepers, I hope it's a sus two. <laughs> Let's get the manual out. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six. Okay, it's actually the sixth, so sorry about that. <laughs> so what you're doing is you're playing the root, the fifth, and the sixth. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're playing the sixth, now we're bouncing off the sixth. So we've got the root, the fifth, and the sixth. We're playing the fifth with the index finger each time. All we're doing is moving it up and down the string. So we're starting off with the A and D strings, then we're moving our index finger down, so it's playing that D and B string, sorry, G string, excuse me. Coming back up to that A and D string, coming all the way back up to the, you know, the E. So, yeah. So in technical terms, we're just playing the root notes with the fifths, kind of power chords, if you will. Roots of fifths, and then for a bit of colour to keep stuff rocking around, add a little bit of tension. We're bouncing off the, uh, like bouncing a ball against something a bit unstable. We're bouncing the fifth off the sixth. Okay, and our sixth chord is our relative minor. So in this case, our sixth is going to be F sharp minor. Okay. So instead of going like A, that's kind of what we're doing in full chord form. One, six, tonic, relative minor blues. Okay? Now, we have our pattern. I'm just hitting it twice, and then I'm hitting it twice after I move up two frets. Okay? So once again, I'm just playing the top two strings of each chord and then I'm going up two frets from my fretted note and playing that one instead. Every alter alternating boogie, boogie woogie. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, 
one and two and three and four. And we get a bit of groove for like. I didn't have my blues capabilities, yeah. Oh, it's a sen 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 sensory, is it? Sen sensory overload, sen sanitary, sen sensory overload. Okay, listen, we're getting back to it. So that's how you play the blues, all right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Just two strings at a time. You can do that with a plec, or else you can use your index and your middle, yeah, index and your thumb, excuse me. You can really use anything as you want. I generally use, for this kind of carry on, if you want to be an absolute Vegan Stephen Pro HD super powerhouse, I wouldn't recommend you do it at this stage, kids, to be honest. But uh, you get a plectrum in your hand and you use your middle finger. So you play. Uh... I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there. I'm playing. Uh, it's like playing with your fingers, but your thumb has a plectrum hanging out of it and you do a lot of your work with your middle and your ring finger there. And if you need to, you give it an old tickle every so often. Woo, geez, so oh, oh. What was that with your uh, little finger? All right, when in doubt, use your musical alphabet. All right, so that's your blues. Okay. So I'm cheating every so often. Do you remember I said you go to uh, you go to that ring finger on the fourth fret, okay? So sometimes I scoot it up one more, or else I use my little finger to add even more tension onto that seventh. Dipping into that pentatonic, and then using the same shape, to use a major pentatonic. Sounds a little bit more optimistic. Maybe a little bit less emotional. So it's the pentatonic scale. Still that blues, man. That blues is still on that chart. That blue chart. We all we're doing is four bars of chord one, uh, two bars of chord four, two car, two more bars of chord one, and then we've got turnarounds. So that's five, four, one, five. Okay, in the key of A, that is E D A E. Pentatonic and a 
little bit. 90%, 90% swagger, 5% guitar playing, 5% Mystical, mystical magic. <laughs> That's the exact quantities you need to play, play guitar. You need 90% swagger, 5% talent, and 5% persistence, or something like that. I jest, I jest. Um, yeah, so we'll learn the old. Um, We'll learn all the things, but it just goes to show. Uh, when the first few years I was playing guitar, I thought, fuck, you know, I need a, I need a fucking really nice guitar, you know? I need fucking one of these ones the lads have on TV. Uh, and this is just some old, this is just some old, it's not an expensive guitar by any means, like. Uh, this would be a similar, in the similar product to the one delivered right to your door when you purchase from Crate Now, forwarded by Vegan Steven. Um, yeah, it just goes shell, it's not about the instrument at all, it's fucking mind blown, it's just mind blown, because you could take this guitar out and give me a different guitar, I'd still be melting your faces off, do you know what I mean? I used to think, man, if I don't have this jacket on, or if I don't have, if my guitar doesn't look cool with my jacket, then people won't think I'm cool, and... All this mad stuff, when in fact, just practice all day, every day. Believe in yourself and all that. Clear goals will really help. Do whatever you want to do all day, every day. Learn how to monetize off it. So you got to study a little bit of business. And uh, get your business and jack. Anyway, if you're listening, all that positive talks for the a different show. So we're gonna we're gonna go through the Morning Express if you want to check out any of that. Live your life, positive there. Alright, let's go up and down the musical alphabet. A, A sharp, B. By the way, there's a few different names you can use for these middle notes. Black notes, if you will. Um, what have we got? Oh, uh, let's see. B flat slash A sharp. Um, D flat slash C sharp. Um, we also have D sharp, E flat, we also have F sharp, slash G flat, and G sharp, I think I messed that last one up, G flat slash F sharp, and then finally we have A flat and G sharp. Alright, so hopefully that made a little bit of sense, if it didn't make sense, you just look in, look down at the uh, the black keyboard there on the screen and it just goes through the piano, just listen off the names of the keys, the black keys there on the, because it's a bit unusual the way, do you know all the white notes have one name and they're like right this is what I am and then the black notes are kind of a bit unsure, they're kind of like am I sharp, am I flat, I'm I'm forcing on, you know, human thoughts onto a onto a, a keyboard, an animate object here, so uh I know what I'm saying is a bit a bit bonkers. But um they basically just have two names for them and sometimes it gets a bit confusing. Alright? And once again, there's no such thing as Santa Claus Oh what? What? Who said that? Jeez, sorry, who said that? Hang on. Sorry. I don't know who I don't know who we have a non-believer among us. Okay, there's no such thing as E flat, and there's no such thing as C flat or B sharp. Okay, here we go. A, do this with me, okay? Hit that open A string and count up finger by finger until you get to that double note, which which equals your twelfth fret. Okay. I hope you guys have been picking your guitars. Tremo picking, tremo picking, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, push that TV. If you haven't, then your time to start. So just this kind of carry on. Ideally, you'll have. Uh, we're still at the stage, uh, you know, getting comfortable with the in, in, uh, instrument, so it'll take a little bit of time. Just stick with it, darling. I'll show you all the things, all the secrets.
Let's try the open A string. A, A sharp, B, C, D sharp, D flat, excuse me, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. Okay, I'm gonna descend now. Try and descend with me. A. A flat, G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, C flat. No, B, no such thing as C flat. Here's our, oh my god! I almost got caught in the wormhole there. Uh, B flat, A, okay. okay. Let's hear A minor, people. Now, if you remember, if we talked about this last lesson. If you want to go to A minor to E, you don't take off all your fingers and go, oh, jeez, what, what am I doing here? You simply release the tension on your grip and pull your, squeeze your hand tighter, okay? So here's your, your A minor. So you're going to squeeze your hand a little bit tighter, which pulls up your bottom fingers up the neck. It's very subtly, just squeeze a little bit tighter. Um, and that'll put you into an, a, an E chord, okay? Then lift your fingers up, relax a little, down to A minor. E, A minor, 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 E, 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 E major, E minor. Okay, that's very good. Keep practicing those sevens, let's hear your seven chords. Is that G string ringing out? Is that little E string ringing out your A seven? D7. Is that B string ringing out? That note there is C. People need to hear it. It's not a D major like this. It's just D7. Okay. Cheeky F sharp on the bass there if you're feeling cheeky. Put your thumb on the second fret there of the big E string if you're feeling very, very cheeky. You can also do this cheeky number here, which is not being Stephen special. I shouldn't be giving away my trade secrets here I know I'm a very very bad man but don't worry I'm getting 200 euro a hat but I'll try to I'll try to s survive somehow alright um should listen we'll save that for a sneaky other episode so I'd say keep practicing saying yourself eh you know do re mi fa so la ti do um no re mi fa so la ti do and I'll probably show you that scale in the next lesson or two. Do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa so la ti do di la so fa re mi do re mi fa some days I can do it really like fucking bang on other days it takes me a little bit longer to do it I'm kind of like is that is that in tune is that not in tune I can't tell and other days I'm just like boom I'm telling everyone if things are in tune I remember I was able my ear is so fucking shit hot right at this stage of my life that I can be playing drums with earplugs in and tell if the bass guitar is flat which is insane uh, like I'm talking about not like, even at a lot of at a, it's just literally insane to think that you can be playing drums, have earplugs in, and you can, uh, how do I say it, interpret low frequency content uh, to the level that you can tell if a bass instrument is sharp or flat, which is very fucking hard to do at uh, the best of times with earplugs in while playing drums uh, and singing tune on top of it. Okay. All I'm saying is this takes a lot of work, okay? So just. It's, it's just. You can get on fine without a musical ear ish, but I don't know. It just, this is practice. That's all I'm trying to say. So I'm bringing my note down and back up. Because this, uh, this room here is a very cold room, so the, the uh, studio B is quite, quite a little cold. So the, the, the guitar. And I've already not, I can notice one of my tuners here is kind of a bit loose. Like every time I tighten it, it goes back on itself a little bit. So, what you can do there is uh, 
open it up and and tighten some of the little bolts inside but um, I'd encourage you to If you're anyway taking guitars or any instrument seriously, that you know how to take it apart and put it back together again. Just anything, like, all this stuff might seem really, really mundane and stuff, but the greats, think about when people are going to war. If they drop their rifle or any of that stuff on their train and they're told, you have to sleep with your rifle. Yeah. Alright, you can't. You gotta think of the guitar as sometimes people think of it as an inflation of the genitals, and that's another whole other concept and conversation. And maybe subconsciously it is, who knows? But all I'm trying to get to today is tune the guitar. Okay? So hopefully you guys are in tune with that. I'm not I'm not even in tune. As you tune the guitar, uh, the, the tension readjusts, okay? So every time you tune one string, the tension across the whole neck is... I can even hear it drift in there. Uh, even as you tune the guitar, the, all the other strings are going... That's going to cause all the other strings to have slightly less or more tension on them. Because all we're doing here is pulling back a bow like archery, do you know what I mean? And the, if you... If... Okay, 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 okay. I'm doing it. Hello. Here's a bow. What? Where'd you get that bow from? Well, do you hear that note? Can you hear it? And now I'm going to tighten this and make a different note. Hang on, how's this work? This is actually how a guitar works as well. Um, this is equals a guitar, and depending on how high up the... This is how a fretting system works. Can you guys hear this? And the longer the string... Okay, here it is, right? Here's a bow. So this represents two things. I'm gonna show you how it represents a fretboard, so when you press down some of the bow on itself, it shortens the length of the string which um, can allow it to vibrate more times per second because there's less of it, so it vibrates at a higher frequency less resistance and all that crack um, Okay, can you hear this? And I'm going to make the strength the, that's pretty high up isn't it? I'm just using less and less of the string on the actual bow so this you can replicate the the idea of the of stringed instruments using a simple tool such as a bow. Um, this also this also represents again the bowing of the guitar neck and the pressure that is forced on the neck with each. I'm trying to multitask here. Where's my Where's my country gown? Where's my... Okay, so, bow. So, a few concepts we're talking about here with a bow. Uh, first of all, it represents the bowing in the neck, which is a... is a... how do you say it? A side effect of the tension on the string. The more tension on the string, the more you tighten up those strings, the more you... if you tune them up real tight, the neck's gonna bow even more. If you loosen those strings, the bow is gonna be less bowed, okay? Hope this is making sense. So, if this if we put frets on this bow, okay? Right now it's like a violin. If we put frets on this bow, uh, it would have fixed intervals of, say, a semitone or so on. So maybe if we squeeze the string against the bow here, we would have an A. We can even get out a tuner and figure out what notes all these things are. But anyway, uh, depending on where, where you have it, we're, we're lengthening and shortening this piece of string. Okay, let's hear this, how this sounds. Alright. That has a note in it, especially as it's resonating now. Um, so it shoots through the frequency range when you first let it go, and then it um, resonates on the kind of a key resonance there. Now I'm going to shorten the length of the string by pressing down on the bow, 
Okay, so I've, let, I've shortened the length of the string. I've made a new connection here, just as if I'm, this is very similar to how like a violin and double bass work. Pretty much, it's pretty much the exact same to be honest, except they've more of a resonance chamber down the end here. So now I've shortened the length of the string. Let's have a listen. Now this sounds okay, and then I'll shorten it again, shortening the length of the string. Whoops, a bit of fret buzz there. Let's try this. Okay, let's shorten it even more. Now shorten it halfway across the bow. So do you know what? If I hit this string right now. Okay, so I should get, uh, I'm cutting the string in half here, so I should have an octave of that, or at least two, I'll say an octave of that, up. That's, is that real? Let's try now, here's the full length. And here's one octave up, cutting the string in half. So I'm just holding my hand halfway through, let's have a listen. I don't know, and now I'm gonna cut, do it in a quarter. All right, so I'm only gonna play, this bit of, just make sure I'm in the video here, we're only going to play this last little quarter and we're going to hear what that sounds like. Alright, that's quite high pitched isn't it? That's resonating so fast, now we're going to try an eighth. Okay, here's all of us, eight and eighth, a uh, quarter, you can buy it on tick till Monday, uh, halfway, and full. Okay, so it's resonating less times per second. When it's fully out and faster as it goes up. Um, okay, I think that's everything for today. So this is a, a bow. Was, I'd even recommend if you can just holding a bow and just trying to internalize these concepts which I'm talking about because they can just be very confusing. Like, do you know what I mean? If you've nothing to relate it to, I find it easier and easier to learn different methods of ideologies and and concepts because I've more stuff to relate it to in life. A life goes on. Okay, I think we might have to leave it there. Okay, so listen, if I can do it, anyone can do it, honestly. I never did well in school, but you're gonna have to put the hours in. Okay, good luck.